What's up guys? Alex Corey here with cultivatedchange.com and it is my favorite time of the winter. Today is seeding day. I got ahead of it this year, thankfully, or I'm on schedule rather, I'm always playing catch up. So I wanted to bring you guys along for the process. We're gonna do a couple different things uh, in this series of videos I'll be putting out. I'll gather everything together at the end for a full process, but I will put out videos as I'm doing it myself. Um, so I'm seeding for a farm and garden store uh, this year as well. So we're gonna do things for personal level and on a um, small scale commercial level. Um, overview the process. I always make my labels first and then put them in only when I'm done seeding so I know, because my experience farming, um, I've gotten to the point where, you know, if I seed four trays of the same thing, um, I forget what they were. So I always make my labels first. That's what these are. We're going to do uh, four different types of seed just to show you a little variation. We have uh, two different kinds of lettuce. We've got a red romaine, green romaine. We have a uh, bright light Swiss chard from True Leaf Market. These are from So True, local company. And this is regular uh, Vates Blue Scotch Curly Kale, regular Curly Kale. These seeds I found uh, just on my seed rack and they're a little older so we're going to do an experiment, uh, sort of a proof of concept thing. We got some uh, Bloomsdale spinach, some snap peas, sugar snap peas, parsley which I've never actually seeded myself for, for my garden and some broccoli rob. So very varied seeds. These are older, we're going to sprout them or soak them overnight and try to give them a head start just to ensure germination. We'll do that with this. We'll do some 72 cell and some 48 cell. I'll explain what we're doing um, as we're doing it. I'm gonna be using uh, Bush Doctor Coco Loco Coconut Core Potting Soil for this just because I like the water retention. It's a good light mix, provides enough fertilizer for somewhere between four weeks and six weeks. Uh, and then we'll, we'll take care of that in another video. Uh, so I just have labels, soil, uh, trays, these have bottom trays in them. Seeds, uh, we'll use this to soak or to spray in the paper towels for the seeds. These are just to uh, sprinkle seeds out too, just to make them easier to grab as we're sprinkling. And uh, we'll explain the, the major parts as we go. Let's get started. I'm going to start with some Bloomsdale spinach from So True. Again, I don't know how old these are, which is why we're soaking them. Reduce the chance that they don't germinate. Spinach has kind of iffy germination anyway. This is just filtered water. <clears throat> Not a great idea to use a ton of chlorine if you're trying to germinate something. So we're just going to spritz them down. And I'll check on this again tonight and spritz them down just to make sure they stay moist and we'll seed them tomorrow. And then I just put a tag on them just so I know what they are. We'll be able to tell from the seed, but just in case. Next one we're going to do is peas. Now you're supposed to soak peas anyway, and I usually direct seed them into the ground, but these are old, and uh, I actually want to try transplanting peas this year. So we will soak these. Those are snap peas, not shelling peas. Those, there is an inoculant that you can get for peas to help them germinate, but we'll just do the old fashioned method. And then label. Next one will be parsley. And I've never done parsley from seed myself just because it takes so long. Um, there's a ton of seeds in here, but I'm going to do them all because I probably won't do this again this year and they will be too old. So we'll just do a lot of parsley. Never a bad idea to have more parsley. 
spritzed. Labeled, that's an Italian giant. Last one, Broccoli Rob. I like Broccoli Rob because I don't have a ton of sun in my garden in the spring. I have plenty for greens, but uh, there's, there's a tree canopy. So Broccoli Rob requires a little less sunlight just because it doesn't have to pump out one big flowering head. You get a ton of little shoots. So I find that it does better in my context, in my garden. And I am all about context. So that's Broccoli Rob. It actually got kind of nice outside. So I always like to seed or uh, fill soil outside rather than inside just because it makes less of a mess. If you can't, you can do this process inside. Just you have to be a little more careful just so you don't spill soil everywhere or garage would be great. I'm just going to do one tray with an explanation and then just fill the others quickly and we'll go back in and seed. Um, I have 248 cell here and 272 cell. I do the 48 cell with any of the brassicas or the longer term crops just because their root systems will be a little more robust. So these we're going to do the two uh, lettuces. I will do the shard and the kale in, uh, in these two. So I'm just going to fill these guys with some Coco Loco. The only thing special with seeding is just to make sure the soil is actually tamped down. Uh, you don't want hyper fluffy soil, meaning you want to have the soil in the final position that it's going to be in when the seeds go in. So I will water it in before I add the seeds. You don't want the seed depth changing a ton when you add water. Just sift it just to make sure there's no big chunks. Coco Loco never really has that much of an issue, but if you're using soil blocks or um, a peat moss mix, whatever you like, just make sure that you don't have any huge clumps in this. The only thing that I do whenever I'm seeding for myself that I usually don't do is after you've spread the dry soil, just tamp it down a little bit. That lets all of the soil sink a little bit and then usually you'll get a quarter inch or so on the top and then I will just fill that in with, with additional soil because this is going to sink in a little bit whenever we water it down as well. Oh. I'm just gonna water it in. This is why I like doing this outside, just the watering part. You can fill the bottom tray with water and let it wick up, but I always like fully saturating soil when I have the option. Okay. And that's it. I will do the, uh, make the holes inside with you in the, in the warmth. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick soil fill, fast forward with these three, just so you can see the process and we'll go back inside the seat.
And if you're doing this with a garden hose and you already have the uh, the cells in their the bottom trays without holes, uh, be careful how much water you do that with because that will stay in the bottom, anything that drains through. And you don't want them to be sitting in moisture. You want them to be saturated, uh, but you don't want a pool of water because they'll um, end up just going with anaerobic respiration and potentially rot. We're gonna be spritzing the top of them uh, with a spray bottle as we check each day. So just make sure they're fully saturated. We'll go back inside and we'll do a quick seeding. All right, back inside. Uh, we're just gonna seed quickly. I'll show you my procedure. Everyone's got their own little nuances and specific things they do to either prevent themselves from forgetting or just to get consistent planting depth. You'll find a ton of people with their own contraptions. Uh, when I worked on a lettuce farm in Hawaii, they had a, it might have been a Johnny specific, 10-20 um, size seating pallet. It was a wooden structure. I'll see if I can find a picture for it with uh, plastic and little holes in the plastic and you would just basically pour a bunch of seeds in it, slide the plastic, and when you're ready, pull it so the holes um, were over, line it up and you would just slide it out and the seeds would drop in. Uh, that was pretty cool, but not necessary for uh, the amount of seeding I'm doing. Uh, some people have little dimples and they'll poke holes in it to get a consistent depth. I really like just feeling soil. It's mm, seeding and growing things is one of the more intimate things that you can do. And I really like having an individual connection with each plant. Science kind of, sounds kind of woo woo, but uh, it makes me feel connected to each plant in the ground since things take on a little more personal level. So uh, we're gonna do Kale first, so this is the uh, Vates Blue Scotch Curls from True Leaf. Try to get all the seeds down the bottom. And this is a lot, this is four ounces of kale. So this is a few seedings worth of kale. And I'm just gonna pour a bunch in here. Try to not open this package if you have that many seeds as much as possible just to reduce the chance of getting moisture and just contaminants in there if that's gonna be its permanent storage area. So about that many and I'm just gonna pick them out and put them in. So uh, this, if you get this big of a pouch, it's not gonna have the specific instructions that a small packet would on it for uh, you know, like the little seating depth and row spacing and all that. Uh, this, always look it up from the manufacturer or the reseller. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, that is a half inch deep. So this is why some people have dimples, but I'm pretty decent at judging half inch with my fingers at this point. So we're just going to do this quickly, and then I will give you an overview of the seating process since you guys have probably seen the seating before. Nothing too special. And then I'll just tell you what I do to cover it. Everyone's got their own method for this, but we'll do that and then we will, uh, actually I'm gonna do the, the shard while I'm at it. The shard is a little shallower. So the Bright Light Swiss Shard from True Leaf right here that's a quarter inch, so half the depth of the kale. And if you screw up the depth on this, you can just fill it in with less soil. Meaning whenever we put the, tuck them in, so to speak, we can just do a lighter sprinkling. It's always better, in my opinion, since I've had germination issues in the past, always better to go lighter or to go shallower rather than deeper. If you go too deep, so if you do three quarters of an inch or an inch instead of a half inch, that's a lot more pressure that seed will spend, a lot more energy it'll spend just breaking through the soil, might stunt its growth. So it's always better, especially with things like lettuce or arugula, things that are an eighth of an inch, always better to go shallower. Um, I've never had a problem with, with kale or 
shard germinating, so this should be fine, but we'll just do a quick um, overview of the seeding, and I will, um, actually, I'll just tell you now, I will sprinkle loco back over it to cover it, and then I'm going to, this is vermiculite, vermiculite's just a, a rock dust, um, it holds moisture, so I'm just going to sprinkle vermiculite over the top of it, all of it, and then uh, spritz everything with water just so the moisture sits down. Once everything germinates, then you worry about airflow and all that, but I do a lot of extra steps just to make sure that uh, everything has adequate moisture for germination because my house is at like 30% humidity in the winter, so that moisture will get sucked out. So everything, I do a lot of extra steps to to keep the moisture in there. We'll do an overview of seeding and we'll go to the lettuce. One of the things that I like to do <clears throat> that I learned on a farm here in uh, North Carolina, they did it because they didn't uh, put anything on top of the seed. You don't actually need to as long as it's in a dark area when it's germinating, but they would just take a Sharpie and just gently twist each seed into the soil, just like that to make sure it had a um, solid contact since there's really nothing sitting on it other than soil which we're going to water in but i like that idea so just uh twist in with the sharpie just that you know push that soil that uh, seed into the, the soil and this will also give you a uh, interpretation or a final check just to make sure there is a seed in each hole and you didn't miss one when you were seeding like i did right there or, you know, if I can't see one, which one was it? Oh, right there. And whenever you're doing that, uh, sometimes there'll be two or three seeds in a, in a hole. That's fine. I mean, worst case scenario is you have two kale plants. Granted, some people don't like that because the argument is a single plant won't be as robust when it gets to maturity since it'll have been competing with, for soil nutrition. That's valid, but it's not worth the time to make sure that you only get one in each since kale seeds are so inexpensive. But, you know, if you drop like three or four in one, if they all germinate, just snip off the, the less vigorous ones and let the more robust ones take over. Um, and I'm going to do the same for the shard. Shard seeds are really big, so that shouldn't be too hard to tell. what you missed or didn't miss. Just ensuring firm contact with the soil. Make sure they're sort of in the center. Okay. And then we are going to Cover, sprinkle some soil. Just remember, you don't want to heap this because that'll mess up your soil depth. So some people like doing this outside and I can see why, just because it gets a little messy, but it's fine. You don't need a ton of soil. I'm being pretty blunt about this because they're kale and they're pretty far down there. If this was lettuce, I'd be a little more gentle since lettuce is real close to the surface. And uh, if you're moving soil around this vigorously, you're likely to actually grab a seed accidentally. Just 
try to be pretty even about it. Obviously you can't do this if you're on a farm. I'm taking way too much time, but you have different mechanisms if you're on a farm. This is more for a personal touch to a home garden since you're gonna be growing some babies. I never mind taking a lot of time doing this because this is probably the most important stage, the germination process and early growth. The first two weeks of any plant's life cycle is probably the most important stage, whether it's gonna be stunted or produce vigorous fruit. All right, <clears throat> before we sprinkle vermiculite, I'm just going to pop in all of the markers. Uh, I'm gonna face them on the outside so I can tell what they are. So I just put the name of the plant and then the seeding date. These actually might get sold. If I'm just doing a tray for myself, uh, I'll just put a, a label on the front of the tray. But if I'm going to be using these for my garden installs or if people, if I have surplus, then it's useful to have each one labeled if they get broken up. And there's another one somewhere probably, but that's okay. Anyway, so that's that. Let's do the kale quickly. sprinkle a dusting of vermiculite. You don't want to add any depth when you do this because that's just extra power the seeds have to generate. I'm just going to put a little on. Coconut does hold water better than peat so I don't need a ton but I do like that extra vermiculite because it, it helps if you have warm days after they've germinated and they're just sitting in a greenhouse or out on a, uh, anywhere out in the sun before they go in the ground. It just helps them keep moisture. So it'll help them until they are in their final resting place. You can be pretty liberal with the vermiculite. Some people will put this in there soil mix so they don't have to do this, but cocoa holds plenty of water. I just don't want it to be lost to evaporation. And like I said, my house is very, very low humidity, so just the dry air will tend to wick the moisture away. All right, we're just gonna spritz these down to ensure contact. Just make sure the top of the seed is wet. I have a little more precise spray bottle for this too, but it doesn't matter. The only thing to, to make sure is if you do do vermiculite, don't do massive blasts because it'll just spray the vermiculite everywhere. Make sure it's wet down first and then you can go to town. And if you're doing this on a wood table, obviously uh, dry it off afterwards. And when you're spraying, make sure not to get any seeds you're trying to put back in the packet. I'm just gonna use these because I'm gonna do about four trays of each of these, but uh, if you have seeds lying around when you're using water, be very careful because that'll reduce the storability of it. But that's it for these two. I'm just gonna do uh, a couple lettuce with you and then uh, I'm gonna do a whole bunch more and that'll that'll be our project for the day and we'll, uh, we'll do more of those. I'll be right back with lettuce. All right, on to the lettuce. Lettuce requires an eighth of an inch, so barely a finger touch, like just a very, soft indentation. 
Sometimes you don't even need to, just sprinkle it on the surface and then just press it in a little bit. But lettuce is such a small seed where if you press it in, it's likely to stick to your finger. So I do like just to drop it in and then sprinkle soil on it, but just a mild, mild indentation because it does not do well if it's uh, in too deep. It doesn't have a ton of germination force when it comes up. And these are six cell little uh, inserts that I use because if I'm selling them, I feel bad just selling like four little lettuce starts for uh, two or three bucks. So I try to give people six and the root systems just don't get that robust since they only are uh, here for three, three weeks to four weeks and then they go on the ground for a month and then they come out sooner. So it's just not as, um, not as long-term of crop. So we're gonna use, these are old packets I realized. They got some water damage on them. So um, we will see how well these germinate. But lettuce, I always sprinkle a couple seeds in per cell, mainly because it's just impossible not to. But uh, we will see how they germinate. And then this is gonna be the green. And that will be the red, because I will confuse them. And you'll know pretty pretty quickly, obviously, but we'll fast forward through this part and uh, we'll finish up when we're staking them. Okay, we're good to go. In the interim, between shots, I just uh, went and grabbed the black plastic. I have this black plastic, it's just a roll. You can get it at a hardware store. I keep it just to cut for this purpose, uh, for blackout chambers. So I usually use pieces like this in front of my microgreen shelving units, just in the front, to because there's a lot of light. And since it's in my house, I don't really like staring at fluorescence after you know, six o'clock or anything like that. So I'll just uh, cover them like that. It does a pretty good job of trapping humidity. So I've moved the trays here. These are the four trays we just did and put the more bottom trays on the top. That will keep the humidity and moisture in and I'll peek every day and spritz them down just to make sure the moisture stays on. And this just keeps the light out so that it's in true blackness. We don't want light to creep in because they will bend, and if they bend at an early stage, the seedlings that is, once they pop, it's really hard to get that, <clears throat> that stem back to its usual vigor. You wouldn't have these issues if you were in a greenhouse, but I don't have mine up yet, so we're gonna keep them here, and then they'll go under lights once they're ready, in probably about a week-ish, but um, I'm just gonna flip this down. And that will keep everything pretty well contained. We'll check on them tomorrow and we'll also be back with another video tomorrow on seeding the seeds that we had soaked overnight. We'll see if we can see any little taproots coming out yet.